Hey, I wanted to give a little update on what's going on with the Anim Filter tool. Um, I've had a chance to work more with it lately on some work stuff, and so made a few changes. And I wanted to kind of show you what those new things are. So I'm going to load up the Anim Filter tool here. I have a nice, amazing little animation of a stack of objects going around a circle. Riveting. But this is a good demo for some of the new changes. Uh, previously, as you might have seen in some of other videos, we were doing a double, um, a double length of the scene. So we would do uh, this cycle um, for 200 frames. We do like to negative 200 and 200 after to get a perfect blend. Um, but because of what I was working on, I didn't want to have to do that because it was going to add up a lot of time. So I wanted to come up with something new. So we have a couple of different things. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add dragger to um, the base here. And to make this work right, I want to make sure that we have keys on our base layer for these objects. Um, so this is here. I'm going to select this. Um, I do want to translate. I'm going to give my aim of, let's say, y negative. And then we'll say, no, I'm sorry, C negative, C negative and Y positive. All right. And then this is new as well. I have this new guesser. It'll help you guess the size of the object. And what it does is it goes off the, uh, the bounding box of it, but you can manually put that in. But it does affect how things feel. So you do want to pay attention to that. Um, so first, I'm not going to do the cycle thing, just to kind of show you what this does. Um, I'm going to run this on an object. And so you'll see that oh, I'll have a new animation layer. And it is doing this little, this dragging behind thing. But when we get back here, there's going to be a pop. And so that's what I was trying to figure out how to get rid of. So I'm going to delete that layer. Um, I'm going to rename this so we have uh, an animation layer name. So I'm going to say rename. This is going to be my base. And instead of aiming it here, I'm going to aim it up so that it will uh, drag that way. I'll show you what that does here. So uh, negative. All right. So I'm just going to do a quick pick there. So now you see it's going to drag because it's the aim is going getting dragged behind. Um, so you can have control of how it feels by doing this. But you see, you have that pop there again on that cycle, which is not what we want. So we have two different modes for for dealing with this. Um, also, I recently in the last day there was a bug where it wasn't properly. Um, killing the existing uh, animation layer when it did the second bake, and so it was giving weird results, but that should be resolved now. Um, but I'm going to turn on blend, and I'm going to say I want a 15 frame blend, and I'm going to do a reverse blend. And then I'm going to run that. So what that's going to do is it's going to... blend perfectly. And so what it's doing is by the time we get back here, a 15 frame reverse blend, it's taking these last 15 frames here and uh, reversing them and then pasting them back here so that the same resolve that happens here is getting baked back in at the same time in the sequence. And so it gives us a nice good, uh, good blend. Um, but what if we wanted to add to this? So I'm going to add another one to this object, add a second dragger. And so it's on this object. Um, I'm going to, I don't want to translate on that one. I just want to rotate. And I'm going to do uh, Y positive and then Z negative again. But I'm going to change the, uh, the values here. I'm going to guess again. And I want the blend to be a reverse blend. So I'll do 15 frames again because that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, I'm going to save this. 
and then I can save this filter so I can save this um, wherever I want to save it so I'm going to save it new version I'm going to call this my test all right so what I can do then is I can load this back in if I have another file that's going to want to use the same settings. So if I had a series of animations that was going to do this thing, I could save these presets and then load back in and remap the objects that we need to. Or to reference rig, those settings are going to carry across between the project. I'm um, going to go ahead and do this layer. I'm oh, just rename that first. This will be my top drag. And then I'm going to run that one. So, you'll see that this one's getting drugged behind now, which isn't very exciting on this little simple curve. So, to make it a little more exciting, we're going to take our curve here, and there's not really quite enough CVs to do that, so we're going to rebuild our curve. I'm going to go modeling curve, rebuild, and sure, let's rebuild with that. I don't want to keep these. Curve build. I don't want to keep the original. Alright. I don't want to do that. Let's see. Can we do it live? There we go. So now, I'm going to turn off my mirror. This one over here. I'm going to have this go down here. Let's come over here. Do a nice little fall off. I'll do wacky stuff now. Alright. Nice weird curve. Now we're going to cross our fingers and I'm going to run them both at the same time with run. So now, it's going to run down our path. That's going to get direct behind. And still get a nice blend. So, as you can imagine, you can chain this with a lot of different things to get different effects. Um, we're going to look at one other example here. But uh, you can also, for giggles, um, because we do it on layers, you have a weight, so you can take the weight on and off for that, which is something we do a lot. Um, I'll key that. Uh, before I had this blend in and out, I was also doing a thing where I would um, key the weights in and in and out, the start and beginning of the um, or the start and end of an animation. This is just a lot better because uh, mainly we're doing cycles, and so it's just nice to have the um, the syncs work well without having to muck with the uh, the weights. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, kill these layers and show you how we're going to stack this. So I'm going to make another one here. I'm going to parent that to that and key that. And then we'll do one more. Parent that to that and key that. Okay, then I'm going to do these in sequence. And we're top drag and I'm going to set those. We got three objects now. Save that. And then we'll do another bake. I want this going. You can also, um, if I want to have different values along the chain, you can just duplicate the, um, the filter and you can so this is our stack so it's from top to bottom you can move a filter up and down the stack um, and so it's going to evaluate like that so uh, you can get as you've seen some of my fish examples this is what I've been doing is I have on my FK chain I'm using dragger on it and then I usually use a spring for some other stuff but this is get you a nice little pass for stuff the nice thing about this is that you can still animate stuff and then do a filter pass on it and then blend it on and off. So I'll animate 
pretty typically just roughly and then I'll come back and do um, filter pass and see how it's looking and then tweak it from there um, but it is, it's an easy way to add it um, live to an animation let's go look at one more example on the side to side because it's a little bit different than how you do it so I just have a little um, cool little box here uh, so I just got a series here um, and I got keys on already I'm gonna pull this one because I just want the top and I'm gonna have this one and this one make these my new ones I'm going to set that as my guess and then yeah the aim is fine um, so we're gonna look at this first so this is a shorter animation so this is just a 60 frame cycle with uh, on the base I have just a, an infinity looping animation so let's fix that and that and then what I want to do is to have this blend to figure out to do my solve um, I know I could animate this by hand but I'm lazy so I'm just going to do this and I'm going to say run and we're going to see how this looks and as you see this is not giving great results it's giving a little pop um, just because this one is not one well, it's a shorter animation so it's not able to to make use of the, the longer blends so I have a second mo second options for this so instead of doing the reverse blend I do a single cut and I'll show you what that does here let's run it again so what this one's going to do is it takes this this uh, solve and again it copies it to the start but then it just deletes some keys so it's going to leave those five keys there on four um, because it's the five key blend and then it's going to go back to the final solve so for some things you're going to get a better blend result with this um, and some with another i have another mode that i want to use um, my my partner has one that he uses for um, our anim draw and I want to implement that. I just haven't had a chance to. So there's just some some quick hack ways to do it. This is becoming more and more of a, one of our workhorse workhorse tools that we use a lot. Um, so just kind of wanted to give a quick example on how you can use it for your animations. Again, um, typically what I'll do is I'll have a set of filters for a character, so that um, secondary stuff like little bits of armor or a mustache or a bit of hair, I'll have a filter set up for those. Um, on the, the reference animation file and that way um, subcontractor animators or other animators can um, load up those filters and have the same kind of feel so it also helps with consistency across uh, uh, the project so if you're on a smaller team and you just need fast uh, fast and dirty tools this is a good one to use or take a look at hope you enjoy